There she is. Look at you. Now, I got a chance to interview you. When was it? How long ago was it? Mm, the last time? Last time. Last time. Um, a year or so? About a year. Maybe yeah, two years. A year. One, a year ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you, last year. they said you was the cookie queen. Mm -hmm. The cookie lady. And I said, so if you're the cookie lady, where's your cookie? <laughs> I didn't bring you any. And you said you didn't bring me any. I'll bring you some next time. And I said, well, next time better be. And you brought these up. <laughs> so, before we get into all this, I want to see what's in here. Okay, there's these type of cookies. And this is like what? This is like a... Uh, it's like a fortune cookie. It's like a fortune cookie, really? Mm -hmm. Is there like a fortune cookie? It's um, not it? a fortune. It's a promise. A promise. Because the promises of God are yea and amen. It's not a promise about eyesight, so could you read that to me? Is there anybody else that could do it? Oh, really? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Holy kidding. This is really just for show. I don't need this. <laughs> do all things without grumbling and complaining. Oh, my God. like cookies that prophesy. That's a prophetic cookie. Well, this is really good because it's like, it's got like white chocolate on it. Yes. And a little bit of dark chocolate. That's exactly right. And it's like, um, it's like, a gourmet it's like, yeah, it's like a, a Chinese, like a fortune cookie. Really? Some of the cookies, they are, um, yeah, they are dipped in delicious chocolates, a caramel. Wow. Uh-huh. So one, of our, of one of our pastor guests should taste one of these. Who, who wants one? <laughs> pastor? It's just a couple fingerprints. It's no big deal. Okay. What you think, man of God? Really? I noticed you kept it. Okay. Let's see what else Santa's elf brought me. Yeah, that's our giant fortune cookie. Tell me about it. Actually, not a fortune, but a promise. And you know they come in small, baby giants, or giant. Is there somebody that will actually and you can eat this whole thing? Them. That's for you, Carmen. That's four weeks on the treadmill. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Now, what is on this? Oh, wait, this is like a contract. <laughs> you have to read. You can't go wrong reading this. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, so this, this, this should be a, a really big one, too. For I know the plans that I have for you. There you, you. go. That, that's my verse. Declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not do you harm. Plans to give you hope and a future. <laughs> <laughs> I receive it. Okay. Now, this got pictures on it. You can't eat the pictures, can you? you? It's edible. And you can have them. You, you can, can eat have the pictures? Them. Yeah, you can. And you can have um, you can have your own picture on it. You can have your business on it. Oh, wait, wait. So I could have my pictures put on this? Okay. You could have Carmen on it. You got like a website or something? Like yeah, CarmenTheCookies.com. CarmenTheCookies.com. Mm -hmm. So anybody here anybody watching, here. they want to have cookies made Any with wedding, their picture on it. With their picture. With their edible picture? picture. Edible picture. Oh. Company logo, church. Really? Mm -hmm. How do you eat the picture? How, what, what happened? Bite it, <laughs> chew, and swallow. But it's, it's not paper, it's like edible paper? It's edible, it's edible candy. Edible candy? Uh huh? Well, I'll be doggone. So this right here would be, I'm afraid to do Go this. Ahead. I feel like I'm breaking somebody's Break nose it. or something. <laughs> oh, wow. It tastes like an ice cream cone. Oh, my. <laughs> Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm up in, in the break. I'm gonna pass this around. Let everybody take a yeah. peek. Yeah. Please do. Please do. Yeah. Okay. What? You don't think I will? I will. <laughs> I'm gonna let everybody taste a piece of this cookie. Okay. So let's talk about what you had to overcome. The cost. The cost. The cost. Now, the is there something that led up to this miracle taking place in your life? Because mm -hmm. look, we're all looking for something to do mm -hmm. to get extra income, mm -hmm. working online, taking double jobs, and 
you know, working extra hours. Everybody's always looking for something. Exactly. But out of your tragedy, God spoke to you in a very unique way. Yeah. So bring us to the point where things started to go south. Well, there was so much tragedy. As you talked about earlier, there was so many years of, of domestic violence in which I was almost murdered. Um, literally left for dead. And that just steals all your self-esteem anyway. Yes, it does. Sure. Yeah. I, you know, I was, I was half, half dead. Um, the problem and the, um, I guess I want to say the mistake the enemy made was he left me half alive. Wow. And I, I happen to know a God that works so well in leftovers, you know, like the loaves of bread and fish. And so I took what was left and I fought and it got worse. My life got worse. So I, so I overcame almost being murdered and I moved south uh, with four children and Four children. Four. Three boys and a girl. Nice. And Yep. Single parent. And they were just three of them enrolled in college. I was working three jobs. And my daughter um, was diagnosed with a pseudotumor in her brain. Um, and she went blind. How old was she? 23. And I just, she was dropped from my insurance because at 23, they cut her off. And so... I was taking her to cancer centers and like the young lady we talked about earlier and um, another company came in on the job, my, my main job, I would say, and within a month's time, I got fired from my job. So after my daughter is diagnosed with the brain tumor, she's blind, I get fired from my job, I lose my home and I lose my car. I lost everything. I literally lost everything. But my, but my, but my faith. You know, to assume, to assume that there's nobody else out there who's been through crazy stuff like that is a pretty big assumption. And I'm, I'm figuring that there's probably folks that are even in this audience right now who've had so many things happen to them, they're starting to feel like, well, God, what, what did I do wrong? Where did I blow it? You know, why, why are you trying to kill me? You know, why don't that, you just kill exactly me? That's exactly where I was. Because even prior, to, um, even prior to losing everything, you know, there were times when my utilities were disconnected and I got so tired of disconnect notices. I mean, I'm working three jobs. And, and one of the jobs, I did house cleaning for a lady on a golf course in the creme de la creme area of my city. And I remember one time um, she was having a dinner party and she came to me, Carmen, and she handed me a toothbrush. And I said, what are we going to do with this? And Exactly. I'm waiting. And, yeah, and, right. and she literally wanted her bathrooms clean. Now, this wasn't in the 70s or, you know, this was only a few, few years ago. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I remember. Hold on a second. Yeah. I, remem I remember. So you, a woman said that she wanted to have her bathroom clean mm -hmm. and she handed you a toothbrush. I remember that day being up to here and going to God and saying, you know, it's it's not fair. I'm, I'm working so hard and it's not fair that some people have and some people don't. And, and I'm in your word. I'm, I'm standing on your word. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you when there's no one else, you know, that I can, that I can turn to. And, you know, it's, it's so phenomenal now because when I look back and we're almost neighbors. <laughs> Look 
Oprah said it all. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and, and then I remember a time, and, you know, this, this is real. This is real. Um, you Google covenantcookies.com, you read the story. And I remember one time I was in a grocery store, and as women, we know how to, uh, for kids, I, we know how to, you know, make money stretch. And I had 10 bucks. Ten dollars, and I remember buying meat. I remember buying rice, and I remember buying vegetables. Ten bucks, and I was at the register. And um, you know, ladies, we like to look at the magazines. There was a magazine I was so into it, and the line. I kept thinking, please, I don't care how long the line is. I want to get through this book because I couldn't afford to buy it. That hurt. When I when I was walking out with my bag. You know, I said to God, you know, I'm so, I'm so low, I'm so broke, I'm so poor, I can't even buy a $6 magazine. And you know, it's just so phenomenal that the God I serve today has me gracing the pages of that magazine. Wow. I remember when they fired me from my job. I had worked for years and a new company came in and before I knew it, I was losing so much time with my daughter. My daughter was ab about dead, you know, it was amazing. And and um, the day I got fired, I didn't know what to do. And I talked to a girlfriend of mine, she was a pastor and she said, girl, you go get dressed tomorrow morning, you go to that unemployment office and you apply for your unemployment. And I did, and I got in line, I didn't know what to do, I didn't know what papers to fill out. I, I just stood there and I'm thinking, God, and when they interviewed me, they told me I would get $265 a week. What was I going to do with that? And I remember going to God and saying, God, you know, you're so faithful. And I, I give and I sow and I tithe and I trust you. What am I going to do with this? And I remember holding my first check up to him. And I would have never believed that looking at $275 on unemployment at one time with no college degree, that I would be the CEO of a company today. Mm. Wow. But you know what, you know what, you know what the most, you know what the most, the most, the, the thing that brought me to tears out when I was flying in, God showed this to me. I remember a time when, you know, all I could do was stand on his word. And I mean, I'm serious. I thirst for God. I wasn't hungry because you can do without food. I thirst for God. You know, David said, like a deer pants by water. I thirst for him. And I remember my television before they did all the new changes. I didn't have cable. So I had this... Um, clothes hanger, a uh, wire clothes hanger. I ain't talking about the 70s. I'm talking a few years ago. Okay. And, um, and I'm holding it on the back of my TV, and I could not lean it against the wall because every time I did, it would go bzzz. So I had to literally hold it and like go around to the front of the TV and, and watch it, and I would say, God, Please, Lord, please, 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 and it would fade it out. But you know, it was, it was, it was powerful. It was, you know, I was being preached to and ministered to, and I needed that that word. And I would have never believed that today I would be sitting on the stage of the same wow. program now, that I was watching. There's, there's a very important six, something in in all of this that needs that needs to be brought up is because many times, many of us have been in a, in a bad situation and we took the the money that we had and we sowed it mm -hmm. and and nothing happened mm -hmm. we figured what in the world that there's nothing left for me to do i've i've sown it they say give and it shall be given unto you well i've given it there's another step in there there's another step that once you sow God still has to bring those finances to you through natural means. Exactly. It's not just going to appear on the lawn mm -hmm. or wind up on the table. Mm -hmm. Somehow God's going to create something for you or give you an avenue mm -hmm. where this is going to funnel itself back into your life. Mm -hmm. So, and in the course of that, we miss that certain something that is the harvest of that seed and that is an idea so we sow that finance right and then an idea comes and that idea is a god idea yes and that idea is supposed to be the the way in which he's going to bring that harvest yes. into your life and many times we don't jump on the idea because we figure well that takes work yes. and i just sowed my seed i'm waiting for it to come in and check in the mail mm -hmm. and it doesn't work that way when an idea came to you after you sowed how did the idea come to you that says 
make cookies because you you told me you wasn't even a good cook. Yeah, and I don't bake. And I you don't, don't bake. bake. I don't bake. But but the See, word of God says that He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Right. I didn't seek God for a business or wealth. I sought God for Him. I wanted more of Him. And and you know I I knew it was to to do something for God and. Um, when I found out that singing wasn't going to work, you know, because I couldn't pray, I couldn't sing, I, I did volunteer work and things like that. And one day, literally, I was talking to God. I just had a conversation. I was looking at a magazine, put the magazine down, and I said, oh, God, I need a word from you today. And I heard the Holy Spirit of the Lord say to me, so does everyone else, word of God in a cookie. And um, so you said what? So does everyone else, word of God in a cookie. So does everyone else. Everyone needs a word. I said, oh, God, I need oh. a word from you. And he said, so does everyone else, word of God in a cookie. When I picked the magazine up, I went through the pages, you know, just thinking I'm crazy. And I saw a fortune cookie with something else on it about taxes. And I kept staring at it. And I began to see the word of God. And I literally never thought it was a business an avenue, even an opportunity. I thought it was a ministry. I thought I'm going to bake cookies, write Bible verses, and give them to people in Atlanta. I found out I couldn't bake at all. Me neither. Not at all. And so, you know, the Lord then told me to be quiet. And for about 30 days, every body, I tried to open my mouth up and tell them, what would you... God would stop me and say, yes. 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 And, I, and, I, and I was like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? So I, I would go to sleep, and God would give me dreams and, and direct me. And so for three years, I worked full time. God instructed me to go to a particular factory, and I did. The lady could not even understand a thing I said. She was Chinese, but she agreed, yes, yes. And for three <laughs> Three straight years, I took the leftovers, remember, from my paycheck, and I purchased covenant cookies, and I gave them away to everyone that I saw until people knew me as the cookie lady in Atlanta, Georgia. And then one day, somebody magazine, said, we, we ought to, we ought to market said, this. They said, we want you. Who? Uh, a magazine called for me, and um, the CEO sent for me to come to his resort. And we sat at this, like, 10-foot-long table, and he just stared at me and said, Where did this idea come from, young lady? And I said, God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and that year, it was 2005, I debuted them in Atlanta as a World Congress Center in front of about 7,000 people, and Covenant Cookies was Atlanta's most unique business, wow. and it took off from there. Loretta, thank you for this testimony, and I think if there's anything to be gained from what she has said, it's not just that we can cheer her on for, for what the Lord has done in her life and overcoming all those things, it's to learn a lesson that in the worst moments of your life, yeah. if you're still willing to sow a seed. You also, in addition to sowing the seed, have to keep yourself open to God speaking to you. Yes. To showing you how that seed is going to reap a harvest in your life. Yes. Because that is so important. That's why so many times we sow seeds and nothing happens. And yes. then we get discouraged. We don't want to sow no more. Right. Because God also has a part two to that yes. seed sowing. And that in that part two, there's an idea. And if when that idea came to her, she would have said, oh, that's just stupid bacon cookies. Yeah, right. I sowed my seed. I'm waiting for a check in the mail. Exactly. That would have never happened. So keep yourselves open Amen. when you sow your seed to the next step of God showing you how those finances are going to be made manifest in your life. Yes. So, uh, thank you for being here. Yes. Yes. And I think I'm going to go in the back. I'm going to take these cookies or this cookie. We're going to break it up in pieces like it was communion. There you go. <laughs>
love it. We're going to spread the love to the to, 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 to the body of Christ here. I love it.